You're tuned into the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm your host, Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Friday, April 17th. We're sharing local news and resources focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this show airs live at noon on Tuesdays and Fridays and repeats at 5 p.m. both days and at noon on Sundays. You can also listen online at kdrt.org. This is episode 10 today. I've been shining a light this week on some issues that many find hard to discuss. On Tuesday, we talked about food insecurity and mental health. Today, we're talking about public housing and domestic violence. These are not fun topics, but they're really important to address right now because while sheltering in place is hard on everyone, there are some situations it disproportionately exacerbates. My guests today are Lisa Baker, CEO of Yolo County Housing, and Bridget Guerra, a legal advocate with Empower Yolo. And we'll get to our first interview in just a few minutes. If you've been listening, over the last couple of weeks, I've spoken quite a bit about the role that nonprofits, including this one, play in our communities and how at risk all of us are at this time. It's become clear that loss of events, grants, and program income have begun to paint a portrait of devastation across our nonprofit landscape. Many of us who applied for the Paycheck Protection Loans found out this week that we will not receive them because the government ran out of money for this round. Yolo County's nonprofits care for the most vulnerable in our communities and enrich the fabric of the whole county through a wide range of programs that support, teach, and connect. So I am very pleased to share that the Yolo Community Foundation is leading an unprecedented partnership with Yolo County and the cities of Davis, West Sacramento, Winters, and Woodland. The project is the new COVID-19 Nonprofit Relief Initiative. These local jurisdictions are providing staff and funding to support the initiative's three components. The first is a community-wide campaign to encourage direct contributions to nonprofits. The second is a relief fund to provide grants directly to them. And the third is technical assistance to help nonprofits through the crisis. Two weeks ago, I interviewed Yolo Community Foundation's Executive Director, Jessica Hubbard, who says that while the initiative provides grant funding to help nonprofits seeded by generous city and county donations, really the most significant part of this effort is encouraging businesses and individuals to give directly to nonprofits now because that is where the need is greatest. And Hubbard adds that while Yolo County's nonprofits are struggling with a greater demand resulting from COVID-19, funding opportunities critical to their survival are declining. I can attest to this. With the importance of social distancing, for example, it's impossible for us all to hold in-person fundraising events. And we're also losing revenue from facility closures, uh, from freezes on paid work that require interaction in group settings, and all kinds of other unanticipated impacts. Despite this, many nonprofits are increasing services in response to the crisis or creating innovative new programs, uh, which is exactly what we're trying to do here at KDRT and Davis Media Access. So information about the activities and the needs of Yolo County nonprofits, as well as links to donation pages, is available at the Yolo Community Foundation website, which is yolocf.org. There's a button on the left side when you go there to, to click for all the information on this COVID-19 project. Um, including the relief fund application and technical assistance opportunities. Sincere gratitude to all working on this fund. There's so much that's that's gone into the launch of this. It launched yesterday. And really um, also my thanks to the Yellow County Board of Supervisors for bringing it forward. We are going to take just a brief moment for music, and we'll be back with our first interview. Yolo County Housing is dedicated to working together to provide quality, affordable housing and community development services to all within its service area, and it's something it's done since 1950. The Housing Authority and its allied organizations provide assistance to approximately 2,076 households in cities spanning Yolo County, and here to tell us more is CEO Lisa Baker. Hi there, Lisa. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? 
Good, thank you. Sounds like you've got a, a, an adding machine going in the background there. <laughs> uh, I hope it's quiet. Um, so your organization provides a, a very frontline type of services. Let's, let's start by having you tell us just a bit uh, more about the kinds of assistance programs you run. Um, sure. We run a variety of uh, programs around the uh, area of housing and community development. We, uh, our biggest program is probably one most people are familiar with, which is the Housing Voucher Program, where we provide rental subsidy uh, to residents who rent either in other affordable housing units or in the market. Um, and then we also are the owners and managers of property, including um, public housing and tax credit properties. And we are partners in development of housing. Um, and then sometimes we're funders of uh, uh, the construction of affordable housing. And when we're not doing that, we're also the largest provider of um, migrant farm worker housing for uh, migrant families during uh, the farm worker season. Mm. And then separately, we have uh, in-house services devoted to self-sufficiency and resilience building. And we um, also um, do grants work in the area of uh, community development and services uh, for communities that we serve. You and I have talked a lot over the years, and I'm always astounded by how much work comes out of your office. Uh, so one question I've had is, um, you know, public housing is often uh, involves multi-dwelling units. So with the COVID-19 pandemic, have you had to develop any particular containment strategies for all the properties? Um, well, I think that's the case for anybody who's uh, providing uh, group settings, uh, whether that's um, being in a city or um, a county in their communities or um, or the housing authority or uh, other property managers. We do have to adapt to the pandemic and uh, do the work that we need to do in order to keep our uh, families as safe as uh, one can be in this uncertain climate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yes, that has meant doing things like uh, closing all nine of our offices to uh, foot traffic. So we are handling our day-to-day uh, -day work um, since all our personnel are essential uh, essential function personnel, so uh, we are still at work, mm -hmm. uh, even though you might not be seeing us as much as um, as one normally does. And we're so we're taking our work in through mail, email, fax, um, and phone call, uh, and we are continuing to uh, provide those services, property management, maintenance, um, and uh, uh, sort of the financial backing piece on mm -hmm. on the uh, processing of rent payments and uh, um, subsidy payments on behalf of people. We're just doing it in a completely uh, different way so that both our residents and our staff can uh, remain safe. Certainly. So with the, the rather grim economic picture we're all looking at, I'm going to imagine that there are going to be more and more people perhaps in need of your services. How do you even begin to wrap your, your head around that? Well, I think uh, it's no secret that it was already difficult well <laughs> heading, true yes <laughs> heading into this and we were kind of in an unprecedented shortage of housing of any type but especially housing uh, affordable to people so i think uh when we mean affordable housing we i think we're often very much thinking about that that one or two person family making less than say fourteen thousand dollars a year and that's true but many sort of a, folks still fall into and affordability space all the way up to maybe um, about 60000 a year for a family of four. And mm -hmm. all of these families were um, very disadvantaged uh, before the pandemic hit. And now with this sort of unprecedented loss of uh, economic um, marketplace, um, funding in the marketplace, um, yes, our demand has really skyrocketed. And it's really only the tip of the iceberg of, because we're going to really know what the impacts are after the pandemic ends. Uh, right now, there's a little bit of a safe harbor because there's eviction protection and there's mm -hmm. mortgage forbearance, but that doesn't mean those funds won't be due uh, when the pandemic ends. They will still need to be, uh, they will still be there waiting to be paid, and, right. uh, and that's the part that we need to start doing the advanced planning on. Right. 
And I, I imagine, you know, we're seeing um, both the state and federal government respond to with a variety of uh, economic stimuli. And I'm, I'm hoping that there's something specific that will be addressing the, the housing affordability issue. But so I do think that that's on top of mind for uh, folks, and uh, we are having those conversations. Uh, I think a really good example of that is the Federal CARES Act that passed. There was quite a bit of funding in that mm -hmm. for housing authorities in particular, um, and that money is just starting uh, to uh, roll out, and we're uh, working through the guidance that we've gotten on what we can do with that, whether that means it's there to help stabilize the families we're already serving, which for us is almost 3,000 families in EOLO, mm -hmm. um, um, or if we're going to be allowed to expand uh, our capacity under that CARES Act. And in the meantime, we're already working with our, uh, with our fellow agencies around the country uh, on advocating for a round two package that will actually start to address what these downstream effects could be. Yeah. So. The Housing Authority is celebrating its 70th anniversary this year, and I, I think you had a big celebration planned that now is probably not going to happen. I also wanted to ask you uh, about the community development piece, because the, the, the thing that you and I have talked a lot about is all the ways that you work to build community within the various, you know, uh, residential projects and, and all of that. And uh, including things like after school programs. So there's a lot that's not happening. How do you begin to, to navigate around that? How will you celebrate when you can't celebrate in person? A really good question. Um, <laughs> I think we're celebrating by doing the work. I was just thinking about uh, our 70th anniversary and sort of within the context of housing authorities in general. We were born in the Great Depression, so we were there for the Great Depression mm -hmm. when uh, folks were mustered out at the end of World War II and needed affordable housing. We were there for those returning servicemen when the, there was the gas crisis and the uh, credit crunch in the 1980s. Housing authorities filled that gap and served those families, and, uh, and those are all predating my time mm -hmm. uh, in the industry. Uh, but, you know, we were there for folks in, uh, in the natural disasters, such as Hurricane Katrina and um, the campfire. And YOLO took uh, refugees from both of those events. And so, you know, we know our brother and sister agencies are there for us should a terrible catastrophe also strike us. We have been there for the families in the Great Recession, and we're here for you in the global pandemic. So I think the best way to celebrate our 70 years is to be here for you. <laughs> Well said. If, if someone uh, wants to, to find out more about you or get information about, you know, getting housing, uh, what, what are the best ways to contact your organization? Well, the, I will give you the best ways to contact the organization. I just want to touch on the service piece, and I know you're going to be talking to Empower Yolo, which is yeah. uh, one of our many partners. And um, you're right, it's difficult. We have after-school learning centers, after-school programs, um, we have uh, medical and dental uh, things for our farm worker families when they're coming, um, and uh, most of those are done in a group setting, and that can't happen right now. Mm -hmm. So we have taken our uh, social service uh, folks and our MSW internship program, and we have sort of revamped them into a uh, wellness unit, and so we are doing um, call outs to identify our most vulnerable families in all of our programs and then we are putting them to either do information referrals to our service partners uh, be that connection or for folks that are just socially isolated where they're sort of weekly or bi-weekly call to keep them connected uh, to the rest of humanity hmm. and so we've got uh, folks on the front lines there making those calls every single day and making those connections um, so very proud of the work that they're doing, very proud of the work that the folks in the office are doing. Um, if you're paying a rent, if you're paying an income-based rent and you're in one of our programs, when you suffer a loss of income, you don't have to uh, not pay your rent and then have a big bill at the end. You can notify us and get your rent reduced mm -hmm. uh, for the following month, and that's one way we are, we're going to be protecting you if you're in our portfolio. If you want to find out more about us, um, best way to kind of follow us along is on Facebook at YOLO Housing. And if you want to uh, contact us uh, uh, directly, 
we have a, uh, a, a, an inbox that we uh, monitor that you can get through our webpage at www.ych.ca.gov. And our office, main office number is 530-662-5428. We have nine offices throughout the uh, county to serve you. Um, but right now we're going to be serving you remotely, and it's still there for you. Good. And I hope that you and all your staff, um, you do so much work. So please stay safe, stay well while you're doing it. And thank you so much for making time to talk with us today. I appreciate that. Have, thank you for having me on. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was Lisa Baker, the CEO of Yolo Housing. And uh, Lisa is someone I've, I've known for years. We get together and uh, brainstorm ideas occasionally. And she's one of the few people who has the capacity to make me feel like a slacker. And it's not her fault. It's just the woman does so much. So much, much respect to um, Lisa. I'm going to read a few uh, announcements. And then we'll take a brief music break. And we'll be back with our second interview. Uh, Lisa touched on on the work that her agency does with farm workers, and on Wednesday, uh, $125 million in disaster relief assistance for working Californians that will provide financial support to undocumented immigrants impacted by the COVID-19 crisis uh, was, pr was put forth by Governor Gavin Newsom, who said the state will provide $70 million in disaster relief assistance and grant makers concerned with immigrants and refugees, a network of foundations focused on immigration issues, have committed to raising an additional $50 million. The fund is expected to provide a one-time payment of $500 per individual or $1,000 per household. And you're right, that is not a lot, but it is a step in the right direction. Uh, of course, this announcement was met with some pushback, but I want to say that many of these workers serve in essential capacities as farm workers, and a little reminder that California grows much of the food for the rest of the nation, and we would be sort of lost without our farm workers, um, people who clean hospitals and more. They're not eligible for unemployment payments of the federal government stimulus checks, and... Gavin uh, Newsom said that every Californian, including our undocumented neighbors and friends, should know that California is here to support them during this crisis. And speaking of support for essential folks, local law firm Kulkarni Law is providing some free legal services, such as creating a will to first responders and health care workers. Yes, that is a heavy thought. But that is a generous offer. You can learn more by emailing staff at Kulkarni Law. And I'm going to spell that K-U-L-K-A-R-N-I-L-A-W, Kulkarni Law. All right. Students at Davis Senior High School newspaper, The Hub, along with their teacher, Kelly Wilkerson, continue to produce an informative podcast about the local experience during COVID-19. And if you know me, you have to know that Kids Making Media is one of my favorite things in the whole world, so I love their podcast. Their latest offering examines the huge shift to online learning from a teacher's perspective. You can catch it online at Blue Devil uh, Hub, bluedevilhub.com. And we are going to hear a little bit more music and get set up for our next call. Okay, our next interview focuses on Empower YOLO. The organization provides 24-hour crisis intervention, emergency shelter, confidential counseling, training, legal assistance, and other services for individuals and families affected by domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, human trafficking, and child abuse. With us today is Bridget Guerra, who's a legal advocate for Empower YOLO. Bridget, thank you for joining us. Hi, and thank you for having me. So I mentioned earlier in the show that the shelter-in-place order is harder for some than others. How is the pandemic um, affecting the populations Empower Yellow serves? What are you seeing? So what we're definitely seeing is a significant spike in domestic violence since the um, shelter-in-place order. Mm -hmm. And we believe that that's attributed by, of course, um, survivors or victims being confined in their home with their abusers day and night. We certainly see uh, a significant financial stress building up in the home, um, isolation from support 
like friends and family and essentially separate ties um, from the community that they would otherwise be, um, be ab- available to mm-hmm. outside of the quarantine. So as a result, uh, we're seeing um, a significant increase in restraining order petitions that we're doing. We're doing at least four a day. Oh, um, and that certainly wasn't the case before the quarantine was in place. Wow, that's that's a daunting number there you just mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, what what kinds of help are you providing in addition to helping file those restraining orders? Uh, what, what other kinds of assistance are are you really being? Is Empower Yellow really being called upon to to provide right now? Of course. So we're continuing to uh, provide our normal services along with restraining order clinics. We offer family law legal clinics to assist family law matters outside the scope of restraining orders, such as divorce petitions, custody matters. Um, We continue to have our clothing closet open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We continue to assist with food distribution in YOLO, uh, Nice Landing, and Davis. Uh, We continue our um, therapy sessions online, and we we still have our shelter open, of course, at this time, though, I will note that we have to only limit to Yolo County residents for our shelter, but that's not to say that we can't provide another avenue for housing for um, the community because we're working closely with Yolo County Housing Department to house homeless seniors that are experiencing COVID-19 symptoms mm-hmm. so we can house them as well. And all of that can be available for the community um, if they call our 24-hour crisis line. Yeah, I, I just, my first interview was with Lisa Baker of Yellow Housing, mm-hmm. and she mentioned Empower Yellow, so I kind of love that, that you mentioned them, too. And it's great oh, to course. know about that um, reciprocity of, of work that's mm-hmm. going on. So if someone is at risk for one of these areas that, that we've mentioned already, um, mm-hmm. what should they do? Well, so then we my first um, advice would be if they have access to a safe telephone, then they can call our 24-hour crisis line at 530-662-1133. And I'll just repeat that, Mm -hmm. um, 530-662-1133. And they should be aware that we at Imperial are continuing to operate our offices during um, regular hours in Woodland, Davis, and Knights Landing and then by appointment at West Sacramento. And of course, they're all at a safe location, such as our West Sacramento PD. Um, and we continue to keep our offices open so we can remain available to serving the community. Great, and I, I imagine that um, others can call that, that uh, crisis line as well if they have a concern about a friend or family member, right? Absolutely, absolutely. They can also call our main business line, um, at 530-661-6336 in case they want to inquire about services um, for friends and family. We get that all the time, of course, and our wonderful client navigators um, are always able to navigate the callers to the appropriate department or department for that assistance. Okay. And apart from um, financial support, because you know I've been mm-hmm. I've been talking a lot about nonprofits and how we we are all going to need financial support to get through this. Are there uh, donations of, of other goods or services that that Empower Yellow welcomes? And if so, how would we get them to you? Of course. So along with monetary donations, um, we are you know looking for donations from cleaning supplies sanitizers, toilet paper, water, um, really anything that someone would like to donate in, along those lines. And if they ever have a question regarding um, whether or not they can donate something, um, then I, again, would refer them to call our main business line okay. so that we can just check in with them and make sure it all goes well. All right. And uh, donations to the clothing closet as well? Are you looking for anything in particular? Um so we're usually looking for um, women's clothes, um, children's, and at this point we've been um, needing more men's clothes as well. So really just um, clothing and the fact that if they are seeking to donate, then de- again, I would refer them to call the main line. 
Okay, I'm going to repeat the line, the lines you gave, um, just to make sure. sure we have those right. So, the main business line for Empower Yolo is five three zero six six one six three three six. Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. And the twenty four hour crisis line five three zero six six two eleven thirty three. I, I really want to thank you for taking time to call in today. And uh, is there any, any closing thoughts you have before we sign off here? Um, yeah, just uh, to know that Empower Yellow is here to continue to serve our community um, in whatever state that we find ourselves in. And uh, we are here for the community. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, we thank you for your work. And thanks for making time for the interview today. Of course. All right. Thank All right. you so much. Take care. That was Bridget Guerra, a legal advocate with Empower YOLO. Um, I'm going to cut to music for just a minute, and then I'll be back to wrap up. As I mentioned earlier, this is episode 10, and I, I want to really thank everyone who's been tuning in and giving feedback on the show. Uh, it's felt like a very tangible way to get helpful information out there, local information. 